Welcome back, everyone. I'm Michelle Chang, and welcome to Geek Out. What floats your boat? What's your cup of tea? What tickles your fancy? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. So today, who we got in the studio? We got our very own Brendan from Inter International News. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So, right. Uh, well, I mean, this show, because today is our very first episode, yes. is um, all about what people can really, like, you know, geek out about. What, mm -hmm. what do they know in in unusual amount about and what do you like to share right yeah so tell us brendan what's your thing all right well i have to say i don't know if i know the most you know in this area but lately i've been getting into photography oh, so yes this started back you know at the beginning of this pandemic you know we we're all at home yeah and, actually, yeah we uh, were all kind of bored a little yeah, bit and so i just thought why not do a little family photo shoot, you know? Aww. So I have three older <laughs> sisters and I was with my grandparents at that time. Right. So then, you know, I just took an old camera that we had lying around and just started learning about um, different settings on cameras. Right. And then, angles, light. Yeah, yeah, and then that's when I realized, you know, like nowadays photography, people can use their phones just to take a bunch of photos. But if you really think about it, back then, a photo was oh, yeah. so precious. So precious. So precious, I yeah. mean, I actually don't have very many pictures from even like my college days because that was mm. pre-smartphone. Or rather, I wasn't <laughs> one of the first people to get, to like run out and get like a phone with a camera on it. Yeah. So like people's, the, the pictures of me back before, I, I'm going to say pre 2010 yeah was basically other people's phones taking pictures of me yeah. so right um so so what do you think though it's like so what, what kind of camera did you pick up when you started exploring yeah i think this was like a like a uh canon camera that my sister had a long time ago so it's just like a uh mirrorless camera so okay. mirrorless is like there's no mirror inside i I like did some research to try and understand just kind of the basic functions of a camera. Right. So I know you have your aperture, which mm -hmm. is like how much light comes in. Your shutter speed is how much your light comes in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think it's all about light. Yes. And how then, fast yeah, this click is how yeah. I, what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think like a camera is just so intricate. And mm -hmm. I think I just really realized I took it for granted. Um, but that's when I just started to experiment a little more. I started watching so many tutorial videos on YouTube, oh, so which... You know, I, that's where yeah, I do have to say hole. thank you, thank you, YouTube and other video platforms for, for providing all of these resources for us. Because <laughs> exactly. I mean, imagine without the internet. Yeah. If you wanted to pick up a new hobby, how would you do that? How would you learn anything? Read a book, right? I you, can't oh my imagine. goodness, you have to go visit the library <laughs> 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 or take a class, right? Yeah. Even though I still encourage people to take classes because you know, actually, hands-on practical experience with other people, mm -hmm. fun, very fun, very so, fun. So. Um, I don't know if you know this, Michelle, but mm -hmm. during Taiwan's, like, I think early on, like, economic plan, yeah. there was something called a senbei chun. So it's a three times coupon. Oh, I know so, about it. But did the listeners... Okay, explain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's keep going. So from what I know is that if you give in 1,000 NT dollars, so Taiwanese dollars, you get a 3,000 NT coupon. So it's like a triple like you kind of triple the I guess, value yes. in a way. So uh, what is that in US? So a uh, thousand NT is a um, little over $30. Mm -hmm. So you give $30 and you, and you get, get a Benjamin. Right. You get a Benjamin. You get a Benjamin. <laughs> you get a Benjamin. Right. Yeah. So and then that coupon has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. But then in a way, it may like incentivize you to go spend. Right. And so how they um, decided who could apply for this is basically if you're in the Huji, which mm. is like the residential household document. Right. So if you're on that, you get to apply. Right. So then we just took my sisters and yeah. my parents <laughs> and then our cousins. Like we pulled together oh, our coupons. Oh, you pulled together your, your Benjamins. <laughs> yeah. And then we were just like, what could we possibly invest in? You know, oh. I feel like this is a great opportunity to get something. And then we thought of a camera. That's, that's a good investment, yeah, honestly. I think so. And then so we actually did purchase a camera and then that is a family camera now that now like i'm primarily the photographer <laughs> <laughs> but everybody gets to enjoy the photos but everybody gets everybody to enjoy does. the photos I, and i feel like once in a while it's great to document like 
family moments through a camera wow. i think there is a difference in quality there definitely is even though like cameras these days on your phones can be very beautiful okay yes absolutely <laughs> the, um well i have a friend who um who was very much into actual cameras not mm -hmm. camera phones yeah and she says basically there is a it's a night and day difference if you do know mm -hmm. how to use a an aber you know a mirrored camera yeah um a mirror with the fancy lenses she's got a whole bag full of lenses <laughs> and she comes over and basically takes pictures of my dog which i very much appreciate yes <laughs> but then i compare them to the pictures of the dog that i take with my smartphone mm. huge huge, huge differences yeah very so... professional versus amateur yeah yeah yeah, so. and I think I also got to just like briefly tap into like Taiwan's camera uh, camera scene. Right. So they okay. do off like all these camera stores. These people are so knowledgeable, and they offer so many hands on classes to take photos of food, to take photos outdoors of just like Taiwan's nature. Oh, there are just so many opportunities yeah. to develop. So that is one way that. I think I'm starting to get really excited about and like a newfound passion, I think, from what? this pandemic. Oh, that's um, great, though, because, yeah. I, well, a lot of people were shut inside yeah. and possibly isolated away from friends and family. Yeah. And it's 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 a it was definitely a great opportunity to pick up something new. I'm, I'm glad you found that. <laughs> so how do you feel, though, buddy, about mm -hmm. technology um, surpassing Mm. actual mechanical you know use and skill like like if they can make camera ai that can take just as Ooh. good photos then you know a professional photographer a lot of um, artists are worried about it yeah that is an interesting question mm -hmm. i have to say like i'd be curious to know if they can take bad pictures <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i find my pictures you know sometimes they are very bad but they're also very unique in a way interesting and right. then i think i oh maybe not for other people but for every shot that i take i really do remember kind of the story behind it and so i think in a way it's not just so much about the end product mm -hmm. but it's the process of getting someone to smile like that the process of getting someone like capturing a specific moment right that you always what have everybody was of. doing at that particular moment and why it resulted in this hilarious photo yeah <laughs> so i think the idea of like a perfect photographer mm -hmm. uh, like a photograph is very subjective in a way right. um or at least that's how i feel but mm -hmm. of course you know like photos go on to go to competitions and like if you're very professional then like i feel like maybe that's a different conversation yeah but... i think you think so Th those are uh, definitely in the category of professional photography yeah and i just don't know if this pandemic interest will ever <laughs> i'm open-minded open-minded but mm. um yeah i my um sister's husband's my second sister's husband's parents so i guess her, okay, brother, okay. her parents in law <laughs> her in-laws so you have three sisters your second sister's uh -huh. husband's in, uh, parents okay yeah, so her in-laws all right are just like wildlife photographers oh. so they actually are the experts oh wow <laughs> now that we're family so i kind of got like you know bumped down the hierarchy of photography skills okay. but um so they like um they have like uh groups that they go out with and they have camouflage gear that they have oh, to wear that's, that's into it yes yeah, because taiwan has like a lot of migratory birds mm -hmm. like um a lot of birds come over depending on the season right and so they have to actually camp out and like shoot these birds with their you know, I got. I have <laughs> to say, not not shoot the. You know, okay. <laughs> with their cameras. Once, uh, my husband and I were going up and down Yami San on mm -hmm. on you know motorcycle. It was fun, right? Yeah. And this, the I, basically this guy just started moving on the side of the road in a in a ghillie suit. <laughs> it, I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's like full camouflage. Oh. With the whole like bush netting on you and stuff, so <laughs> you are completely you know indiscernible from the environment itself unless you start moving and i i swear it was like bigfoot was coming at us or like, something. but you know upon you know looking turning around and like paying attention to to what he was doing yeah. in, in a full camouflage suit he had a camera oh so he was probably up on that mountain taking pictures of something yeah but beware if you're up there i mean it's kind of uh <laughs> dangerous don't walk into the street yeah <laughs> michelle i know yeah. you do like doggy competitions so. i do i take my dog to dog shows do they have like <laughs> do they have photographers I'm they guessing. do they okay. do they have like one um um a photographer who's actually hired by uh those of you listening from uh, you know i guess the who have experience from america it'd be like mm -hmm. the akc um mm -hmm. or the the ukc in europe or that kind of thing um the kennel club 
has its own photographer mm -hmm. who has a big fancy camera and goes around taking <laughs> pictures, kind of like photojournalistic style. So just as things unfold. Yeah. And then at the end, there's a there's a, a like a booth set up where you can get your photo taken with your dog and mm -hmm. your prize and the judge and one of those. Wow. So. I mean, I've I've actually had I have yet to see the photo photojournalistic ones mm -hmm. that he, he snaps of, and I would love to where to see where those are <laughs> uploaded because I bet they're interesting. Yeah, dog shows are chaos. Yeah, so but I feel like those are such cool moments yes, to capture too. Absolutely, too. my my favorite photos are definitely like the sneaky ones where <laughs> they catch like moments of people being very natural. Mm. right no yeah. poses is just what's happening in the moment yeah so photography really is everywhere i think you can think of like on your personal level but mm -hmm. also professionally like what's going on in this world people really like uh, consume media now like with their eyes absolutely so then... it's uh yeah definitely it's everywhere so yeah. listeners at home tell us do you have your own camera maybe that is a phone not a phone or love taking photos and <laughs> tell us more about that right do you do, is, it, is it nature photography you're into or family photos or you know secret snapshots <laughs> don't you know don't do that illegally we'll be right back take a break <laughs> So we have Brandon Hello. in the office. Uh, Brandon <laughs> Wong? Wang. Brandon Wong. Wong. Okay, Wong. But um, uh, so we've been talking about photography. Mm -hmm. And how, well, okay, now that you have the photos. Yes. Now that you have all the photos <laughs> the, the, of, um, fan, you know, lovely moments. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with them? Do you do I... anything special? I just, you know, I keep them in the hard drive. No one ever gets to see them. I lock them up. <laughs> no, I think one big process that I'm also learning, and there's just so much to learn. I just yeah. feel like sometimes there's just not enough time in the, in the day to learn everything, every single thing. But there's a lot of post-production. So it's like you got to, right. you know, maybe adjust the lighting, adjust the colors, oh. adjust, you know, there's... Um, a lot of tools you can use to fix your, like, quote unquote, fix your uh, photos to your liking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, again, like, social media apps have made that really easy just by slapping on a filter or, like, doing some basic editing. Right. But really, if you want to get into the nitty gritty of stuff, photo editing can get so complicated. Right. Um, there's skin retouching. You can, like, you know, change the way someone's skin presents, like, on you know your photos and that okay. to me is very that, surprising it's, I just it's never, amazing yeah so like magazine covers th those are all like pretty much heavily retouched yeah definitely not human anymore i'm gonna <laughs> say depending on what magazine you're looking at yeah do not do not hold yourself to that standard it's exactly. absolutely impossible because it's all been definitely manipulated in post-production yeah so i think a photographer uh, like a photograph can hold so much power mm -hmm. like a good photo um, i might think recently you know because we're hitting the new um like new year's um so uh right it's, yeah it's... uh like some you know some uh like journalism entities are displaying kind of like the highlight uh, highlights of the past year based oh, on photos yes. so i think i just remember like you know a, pho a photograph you know once again can have so many interesting stories behind it right and know? definitely trigger a lot of emotions mm -hmm. the um it's been a it's been a rough few years for a lot of people <laughs> because you it know obviously been. pandemic and you know all the resulting difficulties that that um have a ro uh, have arisen from that yeah. but uh so you could put together a photo collage of like 2022 that yeah. is definitely upbeat and inspiring and lovely or exactly the opposite <laughs> yeah so <laughs> speaking of photo collaging i actually you know as an extension of photos yeah. i love photo collaging that is um, good this, uh, this morning i actually just went to develop a bunch of photos because i'm planning on just you know i think it's a great gift opportunity to oh, give yeah. people oh my goodness yes you know nowadays people are like oh i'm i don't want anything too materialistic maybe then it's like a gift that you can give someone who seemingly has like everything that they want. You know, it's... that is that is actually a fantastic gift idea. Guys, are you <laughs> listening? So if somebody has everything, you know, material, if they have all the physical stuff they need yeah. and, and or want, a, a good co photo collage is actually really touching, I think. Yeah, I think um, one thing that I've heard before is that the most, like the best gift you, you can give someone is your time. Oh. And so I think 
you know a collage and a photo and the effort that you put behind it mm -hmm. is much more than just the actual like photo itself right it's like all the time and labor that you put into editing the photo or mm -hmm. like even just taking the photo thinking about the photo and putting them all together in a collage i think that's a, like to me i think that's my love language oh <laughs> well absolutely hopefully the person who's receiving the gift yeah actually understands how much time and effort and like thought goes mm -hmm. into things yeah and i think also like maybe this is a little cynical but mm -hmm. as you get older i feel like you don't get as much you know time to do arts and crafts that is actually really <laughs> true guys super true i want to do so many you know hands-on arts and crafts yeah but never have a real moment to like sit down and do it yeah. in fact uh what i do every year for christmas mm -hmm. is we add uh, my husband and i both go out and choose one a new ornament to the tree so Ooh. yeah 2021 has a new ornament 2022 has a new ornament Aww. actually and what I've done is I've bought this little felting kit. I'm okay. not sure you know what felting is, Brendan. I do know what felt is. Okay. So you take <laughs> what is a felting kit? Uh, uh, felting is the process where you take wool mm -hmm. in various colors and you take a little felting needle and you poke it into a shape. Mm. So you can make cute little dolls or okay, right, yes, you, you, know. right. So felting <laughs> is um is a is an interesting craft just because. I found that my dog doesn't shed enough to make a hair ornament, so um, that's actually my thing. I make hair ornaments out of my pets, and they, it's a little ball. It's not that gross. <laughs> so I bought that felting kit of the same colors of my dog, and I'm going to make a tiny dog to mm -hmm. or hang on the tree, right? Yeah. Guess how much time I've had in order to in order to do the small project? Absolutely zero. Oh. Yeah, too much, you know, too many people in town, got to eat food with them, got to cook food for family. Yeah. So absolutely. When do you find time to do your collages? You know, question, right? it's really about staying up late at night, just <laughs> getting your stuff done. You're like, this is therapeutic. Is, uh, <laughs> no, I, but I think yeah. to be, I think, you know, you always as busy as your schedule can be, mm -hmm. like time for yourself to just explore creatively is... Oh is should be part of your schedule i think that so. definitely qualifies as self-care it does it does so i'm i'm sad to hear that you can't make your um, my little do okay uh, tonight i will tonight. i'll do it i will <laughs> do it tonight i have to get it done before christmas and put it on the tree right does it take you really fast or how well i mean it depends on how big it is so i'm not gonna make <laughs> tiny, it very large <laughs> it's like if it's a tight like a ping pong size ornament it should be okay I yeah think it'll be fine but um i just miss the days when you know when we were younger and we were just you know scissor in hand glue in hand and you're just like cutting Pains, things together. markers <laughs> right uh paper mache that was fun yeah and like, did, did you ever do the thing where you'd like build like a uh, a boat that you would actually try to paddle across the a, water right <laughs> like a pool or something you ever not have to, out of like cardboard and candle wax yeah mine <laughs> Well, I'm just not that good, but I mean, oh. are you, were you good at it, Michelle? Mine actually went across the pool. Oh I managed, gosh. but near the end there, it was like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drown. I don't know, no, I knew how to swim. I knew how to swim. Yeah. So it's okay. Oh, yeah. But, so, oh, well, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that you can provide happiness with your photo collages. <laughs> I'm That's... sure. I'm sure. Uh, well, I never know. You know, maybe someone who receives it is like, oh, I would. I'd much rather you giving me something. Like oh, an Apple Watch. <laughs> then you don't want those people in your life, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna straight up say it. A material, no, yeah, material <laughs> folks, we ain't got no time for that. <laughs> to each their own. Right, but I right. think, you know, it doesn't even have to be like professional photos. It can mm. just be like, you know, what you said, a year in photo, just right. to remember your, um, remember your year in a way. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a cute idea to right. do, and it's pretty easy to pick up. Absolutely, yeah. just that captured moment where you both have, you know you realize your emotional connection to each other or maybe a really fun activity that you know you'll never forget yeah for sure so folks tell us about what do you for your holidays what kind of very significant um creative gifts have you received yeah and i would love to know like when are you going to make your next collage? You know? <laughs> when are yeah. you going to pick up arts you and crafts? Should. Print out those photos. Print out those photos <laughs> from your phone and make yourself a collage for that yeah. special somebody. All right, guys. We'll be back with your song of the day. Thanks, <laughs> Brendan, later. for joining us. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Right. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.